All right, and I'm here with Philadelphia Fusion GM, Rostin Yu. Rostin, how's everything going? It's going pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no doubt, man. Definitely great to have you on to talk about the Philadelphia Fusion's upcoming season, the Overwatch League. 2022 season is right around the corner. You guys got a lot of good things going on as a league as a whole, and then obviously in Philly as well. So we'll get right into it. You know, how's the preparation been for this season for you guys down with the Fusion? Honestly, it's been a it's been an interesting offseason. I'd say it's interesting because uh, we're playing with uh, Overwatch 2, which is a it's a new game. And to be honest, it's not as different as we expected out out the gates. Uh, this early build is just like uh, the biggest difference it going from a 66 game to a 5v5. And I think for us uh, as a GM, you know, when you go from six players to five players, it, that makes a very different roster building process. So I think we're kind of just uh, now kind of just figuring out exactly how our lineups and rotations are going to go. And I think um, we had originally had started on like some like workshop mode to practice the 5v5 version. And then we only got our hands on the actual like a uh, beta model for what's going to be played in the season, just like a, a couple months ago. So uh, we've been honestly grinding pretty hard, you know, on <laughs> practicing six days a week, like all day. So um, I think, uh, you know, we're, pretty excited about the season to start and, and show the fans like what's up yeah so the beta was the big news of the week last week in overwatch it was kind of all over youtube and twitter and things of that nature what's kind of your guys reaction the coaching staff your, your team what's kind of the reaction been to overwatch to this new beta um it seems like it's been well received for, for the most part um what's kind of your guys reaction been yeah so i think for like the fan base that really loves overwatch and still plays it a lot and are like super into it overwatch 2 is like a very good step in the right direction. It's going to alleviate a lot of like uh, queue time problems and kind of uh, bringing it from six to five players and removing a tank is kind of one of the things that I think a lot of the highly skilled players like mechanical as in like um, physically athletic in, in the game, um, they really like that change because it, it moves to become more of like a, a mechanical shooter and more brawly and like a lot of uh, fighting versus um, the end of Overwatch 1, it was like they had broken down like the game to a science where it's like you, um, you know, it's like no flashy plays. It's like sometimes a lot of like uh, uh, managing resources to kind of like uh, gradually push and like uh, work towards a goal versus like having crazy pop off moments. So, so let's look at this roster and how they're going to kind of translate to Overwatch 2. Um, you guys have some some veterans. Obviously, Carpe is a guy who a lot of people that are Fusion fans and, and, and just in this area know. Um, he's obviously a superstar in your guys' league. Fury's coming back. Um, yep. and, and then some really interesting prospects as well. That's something I want to ask you about later is kind of the scouting process. But let's look at those guys first. I mean, MN3 and Zest have a lot of yeah. praise, you know, from all the, all the reports I've been watching. Um, they, they sound like really talented players. What's kind of your evaluation of the Philadelphia Fusion roster this year? Yeah, so uh, we have uh, yeah three veterans on the team and four rookies. We actually just recently signed a rookie uh, like a couple weeks ago. So um, uh, it's I think it's a really uh, it's a really good mix of energy. And I think um, when you have a new game, I personally feel like uh, you want to have a, a younger uh, team where or a lot of young players where they're easily adaptable to like any changes that upcome that are upcoming. Uh, our veterans are probably the perfect mix because they're like the perfect uh, culture leaders as far as like hard work. Um, I mean, there's a reason that Carpe has been with us since the very beginning is because he embodies like that Philly fight. Like, honestly, like when I think about him, I think of him like sometimes like, uh, you know, he's got like insane work ethic. Um, he's like over competitive, you know, where he wants to win at all costs, you know, and I think um, he's there. And then uh, Fury was here for like one of our most successful seasons. I think it was like the second or third best regular season of all time uh, two years ago. And I think uh, Aim God is someone who uh, he was in the league and highly successful for the early years. And then he's kind of been out in the league and like really, uh, you know, keeping his game at the top. And he's like really excited to come back to the league and, you know, show that he still got, got his game. I saw Aim God is a big uh, gym guy, big in the weight room, <laughs> huh? Yeah, man. It's like, um, you know, part of like our, I mean, obviously we're, we're owned by, you know, traditional sports team. So one of the big things that we always try to strive for is like, uh, maintaining like a strong physical health on top of mental health. And I think, you know, we really do believe a strong body leads to a strong mind. And I think 
every year we get guys at the gym early in the season and it's just so hard like once things get stressful once the, the schedules get super long it's so hard to keep them in the gym routine because to be honest they have their own individual workouts or practice for the actual game so their their hours are are long so that priority doesn't always exist but having a culture leader like aim god he's like yo let's, let's hit the gym you know like he's like yo you're eating too much sweets man that's not good for you like he's like um you know he's always like like his his life is like around just working hard in the game and then working hard for his body so he's like perfect influence on the rest of the team Hey, that's great to hear. You know, the Philadelphia Fusion are going to be the most in shape Overwatch League team in the league. All right. If anybody guy has anything to say about it, but um, let's talk about Philly as a whole. Um, you guys are in South Korea right now playing there this season. I definitely think that's a smart move with everything going on with COVID and, and visas and all that. But back in 2020, you guys had the homestand. I, I was lucky enough to be able to attend, um, cover the event at the Met Philadelphia. Great venue, great event, great atmosphere. The fan support was unreal. Packed house, just What's the esports market like in Philadelphia? What's kind of some of the things that you like about it? What's kind of some of the things you want to see grow? Just can you kind of give me a, a broad look at Philly's esports as a whole? Yeah, so I think um, in the West Coast, you have like Los Angeles is kind of like that esports hub. And I think in Philadelphia, it's uh, in the East Coast. And I think the East Coast doesn't really have like a defined like esports hub yet. And I think um, obviously they're the big cities in the East Coast that I think would do well with that is like New York or uh, Philadelphia. And I think uh, Philly is just like uh, personally, like when uh, there's like Nerd Street out there. And I think there is a, a when I went out with uh, some of the players to check out some of like the land centers or the PC bongs out there. I was really surprised like those those land centers are like packed and I think um, they do very well. And I think um, when we had our first uh, grand finals appearance in, in the inaugural season, like we're out um at Barclays Center I sold out Barclays and I just remember like there were so many Philly fans that made the trip and I think uh for us like uh Philly uh has a lot of uh gamers out there like that's that's uh for sure at least in the Pennsylvania area and then on top of that Philly fans <laughs> when it comes to like sports or if you're good at anything in Philly uh I think the city embraces you entirely and I think uh, that's like one of the coolest things about Philly is that I, I know so many, I've met so many fans that are like, oh yeah, I don't know crap about Overwatch, but we have a team. So I bought a jersey and I support it. I'm like, damn, that's, that's awesome. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's uh, very, you know, we, we got to live there and um, I've spent a lot of time there. So I, you know, I think it's a, it's a beautiful city. And I know that um, as esports continues to grow, I think that it's going to become really big out there too. You know, it's interesting you say that, that people that might not even know that much about esports or Overwatch in particular are like, you know what, it's Philly, it's a Philly sports team, you know, let's get it, let's support. Um, what, what's kind of your target fan base? Obviously, you want as many people as possible to support the team, support the game, but are you looking for those new fans, maybe Eagles fans, Sixers fans, or are you looking for maybe some video games fans? What are you kind of looking to, to draw to home stands when they happen? Yeah, I think um, we really just it's like very i think the league is very global and i think to be honest like a lot of fans are not only fans of the team but they're also fans of individual players so if we get a player to our team that has a lot of fans they become philadelphia fans right and i think um for us um i think a lot of the gamers that play the game obviously are already going to be fans so as long as we want to put out a product that is like very like family friendly and like that we feel like um when we went to the homestead i'm sure you saw like a bunch of parents bringing their kids to their first like live you know esports or live probably like their first ever live sporting event for some of these younger kids that maybe aren't into like um traditional sports as much so i think um you know i'm it's really funny because i know this one uh dad like that i talked to after one of the matches he had brought his daughter there because she had wanted to watch a fusion match so bad and then like he had been to a few and eventually he's like, I love coming to these things. Like I'm becoming a fan now and he's starting to play with his daughter. And I don't know, or I feel like uh, there's like a really good memories created with, you know, like I remember going to like Lakers games when I was a kid with my dad and like, I'm never going to forget those games. And like, I think they have that same experience except, you know, me and my dad can't really ball together at a high level or all the time. But I think, you know, when you hop into a video game with your dad or your, your mom and you actually play something, I think that's super fun. 
you know, I, I'll say this, the energy was unmatched in, in Philly. I, I knew it was going to be a good time. I knew I was going to have fun and learn a lot of things about the sport, but the crowd blew me away and how into the game they were, how they were really invested. You know what I mean? If anything happened, I might have not have even known what was going on, but I would hear the crowd. Like, Wait a minute. What's just happened? Like, let me, let me ask someone, let me ask my guy, Eric, who was there helping me. But um, I, I mentioned it earlier. I'm really interested in the scouting process for you guys. And, and you know, you guys have the contenders leagues um, and there's contenders leagues uh, across the globe. Um, yep. There's also college esports now. One of the things that I, I saw researching this and, after the homestand as well, um, the Mid Atlantic Conference, the MAC, um, they yeah. started kind of their own esports thing. They were supposed to have their uh, championship at Boardwalk Call in 2020. Obviously, COVID happened, but this year yeah. they were able to have it in Atlantic City. It went real That's well. Cool. Uh, Marist won. Shout out to Marist College. They were the champs. Yeah. Are you guys scouting that? Is that something you're watching, or are you telling your coaches like, "Hey, guys, we should watch this"? What's kind of the scouting process like for you guys? So I do think that a lot of the talent does come from contenders. And I think contenders has like um, the less well-rounded. I think when you talk about like uh, the collegiate league, they're more well-rounded. You know, they're not only are they good gamers, but they're also a uh, big picture in it. Like thinking about, oh, I need that in my education. And and I think that is the goal in the in the long term. But right now, because esports is still kind of in its infancy, um, you, you, you have a lot of these uh, young guys who don't want to, uh, sacrifice the time to like go to class and would rather dedicate their time full time to like uh, practicing the game and being at the top. So I think contenders has a lot of guys that, uh, you know, get their GED and then they, you know, go straight into like full time c competition to like uh, keep their and like hone their craft and be at the top of the game. And I think um, for us primarily, we're looking at contenders, but there are like standout. Uh, collegiate players. I know that uh, Carpi and I actually uh, joined as like guest uh, analysts uh, and color commentators for uh, one of the California col collegiate competitions. And we were honestly pretty surprised. There were two or three players there that uh, really had uh, a very strong skill set that we were not expecting to see in the collegiate scene. So I think um, as those programs develop, um, I think they're going to attract a lot more top talent. I think uh, right now, you know, it's it's just still like there's not too many colleges yet with that program, but it makes so much sense. Some of these gamers are some of the brightest people you'll meet, but they're just so, you know, they're competitive and they have passion towards video games. So, you know, they're going to pursue their passion. And I think getting them to your school is, is really great through like a magnet, you know, esports program. Yeah, college esports is something that, that really excites me. I think it has just unlimited potential, especially with NIL deals now and, and things of that nature it really opens things up for if, if esports players in college were to do their stream and to be successful on that, they could do that through some NIL type of deal. So I, I'm yeah. really intrigued with that. But just for people who are, are newer to esports or newer to Overwatch in general, maybe let's look at it from a fan perspective first. They just want to watch the game. They just want to be a Fusion fan, you know, kind of understand what Carpe is doing when he's out there making some of the crazy moves he's making. What are some of the ways to learn the game, to, to pick up some knowledge? What would you recommend to, to fans? Honestly, I think picking up the game, playing a bit is always uh, one of the best ways to understand what the game's about. And I think um, once you play it a little bit, it's honestly probably even more confusing once you start, once you first start playing. <laughs> but, but I think uh, at, at least to familiarize yourself with like, the game modes and like the type, like what is the goal of each map? I think that's like the first thing you have to learn. Um, I, the Overwatch League actually does usually have like a short 30 second, one minute clip before each match where it says like, here are the mode types, you know, like this is the goal, like, you know, like here's a payload. The goal is for one team to escort this payload all the way to the destination. And the other team's job is to stop that team from, you know, escorting the payload and like by fighting and taking control over area, you can deny space, deny access, or you can, or you can push it all the way through. And I think those are um, the, the game. Once you kind of understand the fundamentals of what is, what the teams are trying to do, then it makes a little more sense on why certain plays are so big. And I think um, it, it is a hero based FPS. So when you see headshots, you know, it's, that's Carpe time, that's MN3 time, and that's like super exciting. So I think uh, those are things to always look forward to. And I think um, as the season comes, like the game will, I think the game makes 
more and more sense the more you watch it. And I think um, there's a lot of good content creators out there for the league that on their own want to go and break down what's happening and why it's happening. And I think that's also a good place to, you know, kind of digest. Yeah, I definitely picked up a bunch from some content creators, even just preparing for this interview in the past week or so. Um, shout out to GG Recon. Yeah. Uh, I'm, trying to think, I'm trying to think of everyone I watched. ATP, Overwatch. Yep. Um, there was a former player who does YouTube stuff now, but just shout out to everyone, man. There was a lot of great content out there, like you said. Yeah. That definitely helped me. Um, I would definitely recommend that as well. But then what about for people who want to be, you know, either a streamer or maybe a player for the Philadelphia Fusion someday or a college esports player? Maybe that's how they want to get their education. Because that's a real thing. I mean, you can get esports scholarships now. Um, yeah. what, what would your advice be to them? What's kind of the, you know, methods to, to go about that? It's like, you know, it's not just going through the repetitions. I think it's like meaningful reps. And I think that's like what it's it's a video game and like for me personally like i'm i'm actually like not good at games at all <laughs> like so i when i play games i'm just strictly playing it for fun i'm not there like actively trying to get better at each game but one of the things i notice in uh professional players is that you know they it's meaningful reps they're like every time they're playing that game they're thinking how could i have done better you know what area of the game was i not you know and they like i've seen you know i even have casual friends who are very like progress oriented people and then i i they like have like a little notepad and they're like win or loss and then they'll like check off like uh i lost because my mechanics weren't quite there i lost because my decision making wasn't there or i lost because maybe my mental wasn't very strong i was like tilted or i was frustrated when i should have been calm and i think um when you kind of identify what your weaknesses are you are able to like continually push yourself and i think uh, if you're really serious about growing, I think it's it's really important to not just go there just strictly to just put just hours in. I think it's important to like evaluate uh, your hours and, you know, sometimes even watch your own gameplay. I think it's something that people will almost never do. And when you watch your own gameplay, you're like, why did I do that? Well, what was I thinking? And then it gives you a lot more perspective because when you're in the heat of things, honestly, it's hard to know like what the right decision is at each time. But if you look back at it, yeah, you can really like start to take notes on like where you need to improve. Yeah, the game really does look like it moves at such a fast pace. That that makes a lot of sense when you say that. When you're out there, it, it's kind of like you can't know exactly what you should have done or, or why you should have done this. But looking back on film, that's that's something that in football, you know, we're, we're real big on that. You got to watch film Absolutely. on Mondays. So that's real interesting to hear. You know, you guys are, are, are so focused on that as well. But just to wrap up here, and, and like I said earlier, really appreciate you taking the time out of your morning today, starting the day with this interview. Um, just kind of, what, what's your mindset right now heading into the 2022 season? You know, you guys had a pretty good year last year, coming in with some really talented rookies, some young guys this year, as well as those veterans. Where, where's the Fusion's mindset heading into this season? Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of young players, so I'm not sure exactly how we're going to start out the gates. Like, honestly, like, um, adrenaline is a big part of the game. Nerves are a big part of the game, too. And, you, you know, when it's um, when you don't have, like, that physical – aspect of like traditional sports have where like that adrenaline is physically driving you and like a lot of times you can kind of get over your nerves through like that physical like contact and like sweating it out I think uh we have to like really manage these young players mental and I think I already know that these players have so much promise so I know the future is very bright but I just want to make sure this season should be bright as well and I think uh no matter how we start um our goal is to be uh incredibly strong by the by the time we make that big playoff push. And I think, um, you know, last year we, against all odds, we were able to defeat two really strong teams to get into the playoffs. And obviously, you know, we didn't get as far as we wanted, but this year we're hoping to really be at our strongest at the end of the season to make a, a strong playoff push. Here with Philadelphia Fusion GM, Ross New. Rostin, really appreciate you taking the time and we wish you guys all the best in this uh, upcoming season. Thanks so much, Harrison.